what is up welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it comment down below let me know what your thoughts are okay subscribe if you have not you can do it now we'll wait i'll wait i'll wait do it right now you spend all day on the phone anyhow as you can see by the thumbnail and the title today's video is going to be about jerome aka jerry who was the shoe fetish slayer he was a creepy weirdo who was out here knocking girls over and taking off their shoes doing other things we're gonna get into so if you're interested in hearing the story and see how i shoot this look then just keep on watching i know i look crazy right now i'm giving up very much medusa okay by the head but i need the curls to pop okay i need that my skin is beginning to clear up now lately it has been on i don't know i don't know what's been wrong with it it's just, it's just been a mess okay and i don't know what i've done to deserve this if you have clear unproblematic skin that does not flare up out of nowhere i just i just have one question for you like what does it feel like to be one of god's favorites Dead ass. today's story guys and gals is about What's his name? The Shoe Fetish Slayer. His name was Jerome Brutos, AKA Jerry. It's this bald guy right here. And um, he was a little crazy. Or a lot crazy, actually. Jerome, AKA Jerry, was born in South Dakota in 1939. He was the younger of two sons. Now, when his mother was pregnant with him, she, she was already the mother of a son and she just wanted a little girl so bad like she wanted a daughter so bad she just knew he was gonna be a girl so when little jerry was born she was extremely disappointed and her disappointment soon festered and turned into rage normal people they'd be like oh man it's a girl or oh man it's the boy homegirl she took out rage on jerry because he was a boy like he had like he had anything to do with what sex he turned out to be. She would constantly suggest, what the fuck is going on? I'm putting on my Tatcha silk canvas. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's literally rolled, like it's turning into glue on my forehead. Can y'all see that? Like, look at this, it's rolling up. It's, it's rolling up, like what's the tea? Uh, that was strange. Anywho, like I was saying, she was emotionally and physically abusive to little Jerry, literally for the rest of her life. I said I was gonna use a different foundation today, but here I am mixing up this beauty bakery and this Too Faced. The Tasha thing just completely threw me off. There was little to find about his father, but the family moved to Oregon when he was five years old in 1944. <laughs> Mathematician tease, ow. Fun fact, I never learned my times tables as a child and don't think I'm stupid because I was very smart. I made straight A's all up and through elementary, middle school, high school. I had some B's and some C's up in there. By the 12th grade, I had some D's because mama was tired, okay? She was, she was tired of school. But what was I saying? Oh, I never learned my times tables. I was like, you know what? I'm not about to memorize this. I'm about to just do the math in my head. So that's how I, you know, answer my little times table. Not off memory. I was like, girl, no. In 1944, when little Jerry was five, he was playing in a local junkyard. Don't know why. I, I don't know why that was a thing. But he was there and he found a spiked, sexy little stiletto. And he was very much attracted to it. He was enamored by it, completely fascinated. He decided, you know, I'm, I'm taking this home with me. He took it home with him. Now, it wasn't even two shoes, which I'm sure would probably be hard to find in a junkyard. But it was just one. And he was he was happy with that one, at least for the time being, because he brought it home. He would walk around with it just on one little foot. He would just sit there and rub on it, caress it. All of the weird things, okay? All of the weird things you would imagine. Someone who with a strange shoe fetish would do to a shoe. Y'all young girls out here selling your feet pics on the internet. You don't know what kind of attention you're inviting. Y'all thinking it's a game selling y'all little feet pics. But when you run into somebody like little old Jerry, then it ain't no longer cute. So as children do, he soon became bored with his one little shoe. You know how kids are. 
They beg for the same little stuff for weeks and weeks with Christmas. They wake up on Christmas morning. They all excited. They play with it. And then by dinner time, the toys are all in a corner somewhere. So that was him in this shoe. He became bored with it. And he was like, you know what? I need more. He starts to steal shoes from his mother and from like anywhere he could find a shoe. He actually was stealing from the teachers, which I don't understand why their shoes were off. Why was your shoe off, ma'am? At the school. Little Jerry had also developed a fetish for women's undergarments, which he would steal from neighbors' houses whenever he got the opportunity to do so. Jerry was literally one of the strangest children. Who goes around stealing people's drawers and shoes? other than Jerry. Now, of course, only so much time goes by before his mother finds his little stash of uh, panties and pumps, pumps and panties. I be feeling like I be getting back to my, to my roots when I put on this concealer. Sometimes I get carried away because I just start thinking about like the Native American face paint and like the African tribes and then it becomes something else. Cause I'm childish. So one day Jerry's mama walks in on him walking around his room, prancing around his room in the stilettos. And she is like, what? she takes the shoes from Jerry and she destroys them. And he is heartbroken. Like he's like, you, why would you do such a thing? Which that's not what he said, but that's just, that's just what I imagine little Jerry saying, right? At that point, she decided, you know what? Something is wrong with my child. She tried to get him help. So he spent the majority of his teenage years in and out of psychotherapy and psychiatric hospitals, which none of that really helped him because his teenage years, he progressively got worse. Like it went from just being a fetish, like a weird little, you know, fetish for shoes to him actually actively stalking women, following them, knocking them down and strangling them unconscious before running off with their shoes. Now that's not funny, but it kind of is when you think about it. Cause it's like, sir, why are you running off with these girls? Like imagine somebody attacking you and you thinking they're about to rob you, take your purse, take your valuables, probably shoot you and then you hit the ground and feel them yanking on your damn feet taking your shoes off it's like <laughs> i would be so confused you really were out here running around knocking women down and yanking off their shoes that is insane it's insane it's funny though i'm sorry judging me i laughed but what's not funny is this creepy sick weirdo progressed to things worse uh, when he was 17, he abducted a girl at knife point. He forced her to propose, propose, what the, really? He forced her to pose naked while he took pictures of her. And, uh, then he let her loose. And I don't know what he thought was going to happen after that, but the police circled back around and picked him up. Like, what you thought? So he's arrested and he spends nine months in the Oregon State Hospital. And there it was found that Jerry's sexual fantasies revolved around his hatred for his mother and just women in general. Like, I guess she just, she just ruined it for all of us. He was diagnosed schizophrenic. And despite his institutionalization, look at me with the big words. <laughs> despite this, he graduated with his high school class in 1957 and went on to be an electrics technician. Now at age 22, Jerry marries a 17 year old girl and they, you know, they start a little household in Oregon. They actually eventually have two children together. When they first got together, he would ask the young girl to do all of her housework completely naked, but you know, like wearing heels only, which, okay, isn't that odd? not considering his his creepy little weirdo past so she probably did not think you know that it was too crazy like she really didn't think much of it and um well i guess it is weird because he would also take pictures of her while she did the housework and you know naked in heels and it isn't known whether or not this was consensual or forced but there was indication that she was somewhat brainwashed by her husband so i don't know She's a 17 year old, like they're practically children. They're practically in diapers, okay? So I'm pretty sure it probably was not hard brainwashing little mama. 
1967, Jerry is making his way downtown, walking fast. He's walking downtown. He spots a pair of high heels that he loves. They're beautiful. He begins to follow them, stare at them, and admire them. And unfortunately, there is a woman in the heels, right? So he has a dilemma. The woman's in the way. He follows her home and literally waits till night. When he's sure that the woman has gone to bed, he breaks into her home, strangles her unconscious, then sexually assaults her. And after that, he takes the shoes that he saw her wearing that day and he flees. He flees with the shoes. I had no plans of what I wanted to look like today. I don't know what color I want to wear. I don't know if I want like a little pee. What I want to look like today. One year after this incident, January 1968, Linda Slauson is an encyclopedia salesman, saleswoman. And so she's going door to door selling encyclopedias as she does. And unfortunately, she gets to Jerry's house. He pretends to be interested in purchasing and he invites her in to you know further discuss this order she comes in thinking you know everything is fine and especially because his entire family was present at the time his kids were there his wife was there you wouldn't think that you know wasn't a dangerous situation he lures linda to the basement and then he knocks her out with a wooden plank strangles her unconscious while she was knocked out he begins to dress her up and all these different shoes and undergarments they've been stealing from other women. He posed her body in all of these weird provocative poses and then he cuts off her left foot, which he kept in a freezer to later model all of his new shoes. And then the creep disposes of her body in the Willamette River. I'm really feeling this peach eyeshadow. This is the Riviera palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes. Like, I just love it so much. And then I just recently discovered that the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I purchased this concealer because I love NARS concealers, but then when they came out with a little pot, I was like, gotta have it. But then I saw it was matte, and we know that my skin is drier than the nun's coochie, okay? And so I couldn't use it. And then I was like, you know what? It's kind of like the MAC Paint Pot. So let me try it out as eyeshadow base the other day. And uh, ever since then, ever since then, like I said, it wasn't the other day. Ever since the other day, I've been using it as my base. And it makes the colors pop. And they just look so beautiful and vibrant. And now rambling. And y'all didn't come here for all of that. Y'all came here for the story. So let me get back to it. So Jerry began keeping his collection of items that he had stolen from these women he attacked in the garage and attic of the family home. So he installed an intercom system which his wife and children were told to never, ever enter either the attic or the garage because of course he didn't want them going in seeing his, you know, his stuff. And if at any time they needed to access either the garage or the attic or if they need to get to him if he was in there and you know, they need his attention they were required to push the little button on the intercom and be like hey you know is it okay and he would let them know either that he was he would be out soon or that it was okay to come inside the garage is where he did all of his dirty work now in may 1968 just a couple of months after the abduction and murder of Linda, Jerry abducts 18 year old Karen Sprinker at gunpoint from a department store parking lot. And as if Jerry wasn't strange enough, this mofo was dressed in women's clothing at the time of the attack. This had to have happened at night because if somebody run up on somebody or run up on me looking like Mrs. Doubtfire, I can't imagine. He brought her back to his garage where he forced her to try on the different garments that he, you know, had in his collection. He forced her to pose in these different provocative manners while he photographed her. After that, he sexually assaults the lady and then strangles her by hanging her from the ceiling of the garage. He installed a pulley to allow him to like, you know, string his victims up. After he killed her, he had sex with her corpse and then he cut off her breasts to make plastic molds like for wigs. 
When he finished with her body, he took her down and tied a six cylinder car engine to her body with nylon cord and then dumped her body in the same river that he had disposed of Linda Slauson in and went back to his life as if everything was normal and that he wasn't some creepy ass weirdo. Murderer. Shoot stealer. You literally never know what people are up to. Like, I don't be trusting nobody. And I be seeing people out in my daily life and I just be like, I know he he looked like he got somebody in a basement somewhere. Like on November 26, 1968, that same year, Jerry abducted 23-year-old college student Shan Whitney. Her car had broken down on the interstate and she was there, you know, just I guess waiting on a good Samaritan to stop and offer a hand. Unfortunately for her. Jerry is the one that spots her and stops, right? So he offers her a ride to his house with the premise that when he gets there, she could use the phone to call a tow truck. She agrees. And before he even gets home, he takes a leather strap, strangles the poor girl and has sex with her dead body. He does all of this while still in the car. He takes her home to his garage, hangs her body up on the pulley that he installed in the garage on the um, ceiling of it. For several days, he has sex with the body, dresses the body in different things that, you know, he had collected and photographed it. Like, what's wrong with you? I don't understand. Now with Jan, he cuts off one of her breasts and makes a resin like sculpture of it and uses that as a paperweight. You can't just, you can't just use a rock mister why would you do such a thing y'all one thing you probably will never see me do in a video is a plot blush i hate blush on me i don't like blush i feel like it's so unnecessary and i just don't like it i don't even own a blush once jan's body began to decay jerry takes her down ties it to a piece of railroad iron and dumps her in the willamette river along with previous victims and resumed life as it as if nothing had happened. At this time, he also threw in Linda's foot, which by this time had rotted, you know, with him constantly taking it out of the freezer, putting it in a shoe and taking photos of it. And it's like thawing out, decomposing a little bit, he freezing it back. And it's just, after so, it could only take so much. Like it was done for at this point. So he tosses the foot in there as well, goes back to his life like nothing happened. Being a father and a husband and an electronic technician. On April 21st, 1969, he attempts to abduct 24 year old Sharon Wood at gunpoint from the basement floor of a parking garage. And luckily for her, she is able to get away. The very next day, he attempts to make a second abduction. 15 year old Gloria Jean Smith is also able to get away. Yeah, he kind of, he kind of sucked at this, honestly. Let me go ahead and just set all my powders. Now, one day later, April 23rd, unfortunately, Jerry is successful in picking someone up, okay? He abducts 23-year-old Linda Sally. Hope I'm saying her name right, because it's, it's spelled S-A-L-E-E. -E. That looks like Sally to me, baby. He kidnapped her from a shopping mall parking lot and brought her back to his garage. Grr. By this time, he found it to be in his best interest to just go ahead and kill them right off the bat instead of, you know, forcing them to dress up and model for him. So he went ahead and strangled her. He sexually assaults her and then strangles her to death. And from there, he plays with her corpse, dressing her up, taking photographs, being creepy and weird because there's no other way to describe it. Now, remember I said he was an electric technician? Well, he decide instead of cutting her breast off like he had done the previous two of his victims he plugs her up to these electric jumpers and drives an electric current through her body in an effort to make it jump needless to say it didn't work no it did not work when that failed he became frustrated tied a transmission to her body like where are you getting where the hell are you getting all these car parts? Still playing in the junkyard looking for shoes like when you were a boy. Anywho, he ties her body to the transmission and he throws her in the Willamette River like he does all the ladies before her. And he goes about his life as if nothing had happened. Now Jerry would dress up in women's clothing including the heels and masturbate after committing each murder like girl 
sir, ma'am, uh, what in the Mrs. Doubtfire hell is going on? In 1969, a fisherman found the body of Karen, the encyclopedia lady, and Linda Sa Sally. I was going to say Sally. It's probably how you really say it, but whatever. We're in too deep now, so it's going to be Sally. Both bodies, of course, have the same MO. They have been mutilated. The boobs cut off. They have been tied to car parts and tossed in the river. So, of course, people knew, like, they knew this was the same person. Now, even with most of the evidence being washed away in the river, police were able to find a lead after questioning students at a nearby university campus. One of the victim's roommates came forward. She said that the deceased woman had been receiving calls from a guy claiming to be a Vietnam veteran, and he was looking for a date, which, you know, a date? You know, that means he was looking for an escort or, you know, like a little, a little prostitute for the night. He was looking to purchase some by the pound. And what was really strange about it is after the woman had disappeared, he started to call her roommates asking for a date. And it's like, huh? The police persuaded the roommate to schedule a date with Jerry. And when he arrived to pick her up, baby, the police we're there to pick his ass up, okay? During his interrogation, he confessed to all four murders, all four, as well as the attempted kidnappings and the earlier assaults. Now, having been identified by one of his earlier assault victims during a police lineup, they were able to get a search warrant for his home. And there, the police found evidence that proved without a shadow of a doubt, okay, beyond question that he was indeed their man. There was the nylon rope that was found, you know, the body that was tied to the car parts. There were the, all of the photographs that he had taken were still there. Molds of their breast. His wife was charged with the murder, but she got off. She apparently knew nothing about it. They thought that she knew something about it, that she possibly had a hand in it somehow, but she was not found to have been involved, which I don't know. Maybe she, she knew something was going on, I'm sure, like something weird, but she probably didn't know the extent. I don't know. Now, Jerry was found guilty of the three murders of Karen Sprinkler, Jan Whitney, and then Linda Sally. He was sentenced to three consecutive life sentences for those three. He escaped conviction of Linda Slauson's murder only because her body was was never found even though he confessed and even though he confessed to killing her he was never even convicted or tried of her murder because like I said they never found her body they never found any evidence that he had killed her she wasn't he didn't take any pictures of her body the only keepsake that he kept from what he did to her was her foot which he later discarded so they didn't even have that like they had nothing to tie him to her disappearance at all the bodies of the other three ladies had been found because of course before this kicked off they found the two and then jan whitney's body was found about a month later after he after his conviction about a mile downstream from where he had told police that he had thrown it if you thought that little jerry did not get any more weird you guessed wrong y'all when he went to prison he started to write women's shoe catalog companies asking for catalogs and so he was getting them sent to him he referred to them as his pornography. I guess because typically inmates keep, you know, a little Kim poster and some pornographic magazines to keep them company. He didn't want that. He wanted shoe catalogs. He had piles of them in his in his cell, almost at his room. I mean, technically it is his little room, but, but let's be politically correct here his cell. He lodged several appeals, all of which were denied. And one of them, he had the audacity to say that the photographs could not be used as evidence in that particular case of that particular woman because they had the wrong photographs. The photographs of him and the body together like this was him and some other girl he had killed, not this particular girl. It's like, sir, but you still a murderer, so just relax, okay? In 1995, the parole board told him to just hang it up because he would never be released. Like, just, girl, give it up. So Jerry Brudos dies in prison on March 28, 2006 from liver cancer. At the time of his death, he was the longest incarcerated inmate in the Oregon Department of Corrections, which was for a total of 37 years. And uh, that is it. That wraps up the story of nasty old Jerome Jerry Brutos, Mr. Shoe Fetish Slayer. So y'all be careful who you send your little feet pics to when you get in those little cash apps, girl, because 
It could very well be somebody that's ready to chop your foot off and put it in a freezer and put it in heels. And I'm sure you don't want that. That's not worth the little $30 you're getting, girl. It's just, it's, it's just really not. So that is it for this video. I'm really digging this hair. I feel like I'm giving real, very much, you know, first lady. That's the vibes that I feel like I'm giving. I'm so hungry. I got to wrap up this video because mama's stomach about to be growling. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.